So I'm going to kind of go over this question again as I get this question so many times. And I think a lot of people don't look at the whole videos that I make. Uh, and, I, you know, rather than going over and over and explaining it a hundred times, it's easier just to make a video and explain the whole story. So uh, in uh, January, late January of 2020, my wife fell down a flight of stairs. She was in her seventh rehab facility. Uh, I had put her in there. It was really the end of the road. Uh, from there, I was going to put her in a uh, sober living facility for at least a year. Uh, there, there's no longer, she could no longer live with myself and, and my son. It was just, it was really, she was past the point of no return, unfortunately. If you want further information on that, I've got another 400 videos on, you know, the buildup of that. But the, the last month of her life, I mean, she fell down a flight of stairs. Uh, obviously, it caused a lot of different issues. The rehabilitation facility took, took her to UCLA. She was in the Ronald Reagan ring wing of UCLA Medical Center for 28 days in ICU. She underwent 12 operations uh, and a plethora of other things. So let's continue the conversation. Uh, the hospital itself, when she was admitted, I actually was not there. I didn't actually get to UCLA for almost two weeks at that period because uh, no one really explained it to me that it was really that difficult until a doctor called uh, about 10 days into her hospital stay saying that, that her heart had stopped in the middle of the night. And they called me like three o'clock in the morning and they wanted my okay to resuscitate her. Well, this was my first knowledge that uh, her life was this far down in danger. We, we really had no idea. So I, obviously I said, yes, obviously resuscitate her. And they did. Uh, and then shortly thereafter, I did go to visit her. She was in unbelievable amount of pain. She was essentially in a coma uh, on and off during the last month of her life. Uh, she had kidney, she was on a kidney dialysis, kidney dialysis machine. She had feeding tubes. She had a tracheotomy so that they could get things down into her system. I mean, there, there were so many machines in the room keeping her alive. Um, it was just a, a, a dr absolutely dreadful, horrible death. Uh, my son was in college and he didn't want to come down and I really didn't want him to remember his wife, remember his mother like this. Uh, and we know, of course we didn't know she was going to pass away at this point, but eventually all her organs began to shut down. And unfortunately, you know, Amanda had so much infection in her organs, uh, in, you know, almost every organ, liver, pancreas, uh, intestinal tract, and they kept going in trying to clean out all the bacterial and all the damage that was going on. And unfortunately, she had, you know, obviously cirrhosis of the liver. It had affected her heart. Her heart was barely working. Uh, she had pancreatic issues, and her kidneys were on kidney dialysis. So, I mean, they, they, eventually her, her body just wore out. Uh, and on the 27th day, they called me. I was actually at work. And they say, uh, basically, she's only got a few more, you know, maybe another day to live. And ultimately, you know, we ran down there, and uh, she ultimately died from toxic shock and uh, low blood pressure. So essentially, there was so much damage to all her organs and her heart essentially was not working, which ultimately was you know, what, what ended it. Uh, it was very unfortunate. Uh, and I tell this story really to, as a warning to other people and, and, and for other families who are going through this, that the road ahead is a bleak road unless either if you're suffering from alcohol use disorder, you need to get help. Because if you're looking at other people and then saying that person is much worse off than me, well, maybe this week, but you're definitely headed in that direction. And I hope this is both a deterrent and an educational process. This is why I talk about this, this horrible part uh, of you know my life and certainly, obviously, Amanda's. And again, if you are ready, 100% ready to be committed uh, to you know, beating alcohol use disorder. And if you would, I would really like people who involve their families or, you know, close, you know, close people in their proximity to both educate yourself as an alcohol use disorder and the people in your life. I have a complete coaching program. I've, I've helped thousands of people, both online and one-on-one. -on -one. Again, schedule a breakthrough call. Link is in the bio. Uh, set up a calendar link. Uh, please like, share, and comment. And again, we have a Facebook group called Amanda, a cautionary tale of alcoholism. And again, thanks for listening.